Teenage Mutant Movie Reviewer Octopus. Teenage Mutant Movie Reviewer Octopus. Teenage Mutant Movie Reviewer Octopus. Okay, no. Anyways, hi. I'm Movie Man. I'm an octopus who reviews movies. A Teenage Mutant Octopus who reviews movies. And today's review was going to be on... Do? Oh, I do! Oh, I sound like such a leader! And ruined it. Ninja Turtles. So, two days ago now, I saw Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. I thought this was a fantastic movie. Yeah, this is honestly just such a great film in my opinion. Um, so, I, su I suppose I'll start off, start, off, start off with the film's animation. So, uh, so obviously like in, in like in recent years, um, thanks to Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, Okay, so you guys may remember, well, in my video, top five Nicolas Cage movies. I I mean, we remember um when the one one was Spider Man into the Spider Verse, but of course I'm I I t I mentioned in the video how into the Spider Verse has has like such a huge effect on animated films in recent years. Like, you've seen there, like, there's been a few animated movies, such as The Mitchells vs. The Machines and Puss in Boots The Last Wish, which have tried to like, sort of emulate the Spider-Verse style a bit, but kind of tried to make its own thing at the same time. And this film does the same. This movie... Um, with animation, so it really goes for that Spider Verse style that has become quite popular in recent years. However, at the same time, the film like it kind of tries to do it. It does its own thing with the style, and 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 I and I also really like it. Um, it, it like um, it ha it's it has this very like um. Has very, how do I describe it? It's kind of a, has a very, it's kind of a dark, like, kind of a greasy animation style to it. And for Teenage Mutant Insurance, I honestly think that it kind of works. Um, and yeah, also, I think the animation in this film overall it is fantastic. It is honestly really nice to look at. And and again, it fits the Ninja Turtles style well. So yeah, the animation of the film is very good. So for the film's pace now, obviously the Dallas movie it's an hour and thirty nine minutes, which means that it isn't really that long. Um, and no, I I don't think it feels like a very long movie. Um, but, um, at the same time, I, I, I think the film, it does its pacing very well. I, I don't really ever feel like the movie is rushing or anything, but it's still doing a lot during its runtime to, you know, really keep you entertained and stuff. So, yeah, the pace in the film is very good. Um, then there's the sounds and music in the film. And, um, yeah, I, I, I gotta say, I love the score in this film. Like, like, the film has a really nice soundtrack to listen to. And, and I, it not to mention, it really, I think it really fit, it, and, and to, it really fits the film very well. It fits the movie style and stuff. And, um, yeah, like. Some of the songs that they play in the movie, they are licensed songs, everything, but I mean, there's great songs that they use, and again, they, they fit the movie just really well. They 
They, 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 they fit the film style and everything. So yeah, the score and the and the sound and the and the music in this movie is very good. Then there's the characters. We must use stealth and cunning to infiltrate the human world and retrieve Gogurt. Gogurt. Okay, Batman. Dude, what? I'm just trying to hype you guys up. Let's. So, so of course we have the four Ninja Turtles themselves: Leonardo, Raphael, Donatello, and Michelangelo. Um. And I got to say, I really love these iterations of the characters because, well, you see, something that was very lacking in previous incarnations of the nin of the teenage human Ninja Turtles was that, you know, they you know, their their teenage mutant Ninja Turtles, but uh, something that was very lacking in. In a lot of these previous incarnations was the teenage aspect because even though these characters are supposedly teenagers, they never really sort of act or feel like teenagers, and that was something which producer Seth Rogen he really noticed that about these like about the characters and. In this room, he really wanted to emulate that, and it, it did it very well because these characters are definitely teenagers. They they are they act like teenagers, they talk like teenagers. They did it very well, and honestly, I really love, like, what it does with the turtles in the movie, because, I mean, like, there, there, there are arcs in the film about... How like how they just want to be accepted by humans and stuff. Honestly, it's a great arc. I think it really fits them very well, and I loved the way the film executed this. To mention, they're even voiced by teenagers in this film, and I'll be honest. I think all of the teenagers who voice the Ninja Turtles, I think they all do very good jobs with their voice roles. Now I'll admit the voice actor for Donatello uh, now he wasn't bad or anything he did, he did a good job while he was given but in my opinion I just don't really know if his voice exactly fits the character because I don't know, I felt like his voice for Donatello, I just kind of felt it was a bit too high pitched honestly, but nonetheless I I, yes, I thought they did good performances and I, I loved these iterations of the characters because well they, they felt like teenagers and they had great arcs. Insane. All right, tell me more. Ah, uh, so then we have April O'Neil, and I'll be honest. I think this this iteration of April O'Neil, she's actually quite different from most other iterations of the character because, well, in, in most versions of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, April is like a journalist. But in this version, she's actually, she's a t she's only a teenager who wants to become a journalist. And I'm going to say, I actually really liked her arc in this movie as well. I and I thought they handled it very well also. Yeah, she is she, she too had a very good arc. You ratted us out. Hey, don't use that word that way. I mean, it's 2023. Splinter, even he, even he kind of has an arc in the movie as well. And I thought I thought I loved what the film did with his arc, I loved what they did with his character and everything. Like, like he was funny, but I mean he also had that side to him as well, like as a father and everything. I love how they show his backstory and stuff. Oh and not to mention he's literally voiced 
by Jackie Chan in this version. Like, Jackie Chan as Master Splinter. That is literally the most perfect casting choice ever. And yeah, I think Jackie Chan does a great job as the voice of Master Splinter. Yeah, Splinter was great in this film. Whoa! What the? Y'all some little tortoises, huh? I can't believe there are other mutants! It's time for mutants to rule the earth. And then we have the other mutants who are the villains of the movie. So the main, the main mutant, the main villain of the film is Superfly. And yeah, I think Superfly, he is. He's awesome. He is actually a great villain in my opinion. Like, 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 he, like, uh, first off, I love his design. His design looks, it honestly looks amazing. Like, he looks genuinely quite scary. But yeah, at the, but at the same time, he's actually kind of a funny villain as well. He's voiced by Ice Cube. And in my opinion, Ice Cube he he is great as Superfly, and like, not but not to mention as well. Um, if there was another villain from a recent animated movie who I would compare Superfly to, it would be the Spot from Spider Man Across the Spider Verse. Now, how is Superfly similar to the Spot? Because, of course, if you saw my review of Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, when I talked about the Spot, I mentioned how, um, like, obviously, at the start of the film, the Spot, he's not, he's, he's not a very serious villain at the beginning. He just, he comes across as a very comedic kind of villain. Or, as he's called in the movie, a villain of the week. But, of course, as the, vil as the film goes on, slowly, the spot actually starts to become way more menacing and way more of a threat. And that is honestly kind of what Superfly is like in the film. Because when we first properly meet Superfly... Again, he doesn't really come off as like the most serious villain. He does, he does, I mean, of course his design is very menacing, but he himself just comes across as kind of a funny villain, honestly. But then, as the movie goes along, he slowly starts to become way more menacing. And, yeah, overall I thought Superfly was a great villain. He was awesome. Now, of course, um... He has a whole gang of other mutants who we see as well. And I won't get into all of them. But what I will say is that they I, I, I thought they were all very good. I mean, you've got a huge cast voicing them and I think all the all all of them did a great job with their performances. But of this whole bunch, my favourite of them just has to be Ray Filet. Yeah, Ray Filet, all I'll say is, he is just the GOAT, like. But yeah, oh, but yeah, it's, there was there was one or two other smaller villains as well, I won't say much about, but I thought they were pretty, pretty good too. So overall, the characters in this movie were great. Um, so... The plot of the film, I, I think the movie, it has a really good plot. Um, of course, the plot of the movie is like, uh, I mean, you've seen that the Turtles, they like, need to stop, like, the villains and stuff, but I'll just deeper layers to the plot about, you know, the Turtles wanting to be accepted, and even the plots of, like, some other characters like April and Splinter and stuff. I think overall the film had a very good plot, it executed very well. And as for the film's narrative structure, like... Like... All, like we have all these different plots, we have the plot about the turtles, like, you know, wanting to... Be accepted, and I think... 
I think it's a it's an extreme it's a very good part of the plot. very very intriguing and it makes you really care about them as characters. But like there's there's even of course we have smaller plots like with April and Splinter, which I, I think both of those plots are actually very well also. And even the plot about like about the other mutants and how and how it fits in with the main plot, like it's done very well. And it's even kind of reminiscent of X Men a bit, but overall, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles: Mutant Mayhem. I think overall it's a fantastic movie. Uh, it's a great film to see this. See like during the rest of the summer and. Yeah, it's a great watch for the kids, and it can be an enjoying watch for the parents and for Team NT fans. But it, it gives us a great plot with all these characters. Um, and yeah, overall, it's just, it, and it has some incredible action as well, some very good animation. And it is also a very, it, it, it matches. It manages to combine its its meanings with its humor very well, kind of like with Barbie. So overall, it's a fantastic film, and I highly recommend it. So with that, I am going to give Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles: Mutant Mayhem a nine out of ten. So with that, I'll see you guys next time, and bye.